at the New York Design Summit, New York Design Awards, uh, Ksenia, it's great to meet you. You're from Samaska and Partners. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi, pleasure to be here. Um, tell me what Samaska and Partners does and is. Uh, Samarska and Partners, it's me and a handful of other designers. Uh, we kind of have two branches of our business. It's half a type foundry. So we're creating uh, new typefaces and fonts for custom clients and for retail. And then uh, the other halves, we do branding design. Okay. So let, let's start off with the foundry. I love this term, actually, yeah. a, a sort of a type foundry, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. So what does it, how does it look? What does it look like? Uh, it's uh, the term foundry. It's left over from the old days of letterpress fonts where they were actually metal poured um, castings. And now it's a nebulous, it's digital space. All of the stuff we do is digital fonts for download. Um, and, and how many have you got at the moment, these digital fonts for download? Uh, there's five families uh, that I have that are under my own brand. Uh, there's dozens, hundreds that I've probably worked on for other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, we have one that's currently public and four that are pre-sale. So tell me a bit more about that, what, what that actually means. One that's public that, and there's four that's pre-sale. So how does that look? If, you, if you're coming at it from <laughs> a completely naive view, what does uh -huh. that mean? Um, it means one is on a public website that anyone can go and download mm -hmm. and purchase. And then the rest is you uh, have to do a secret knock at my door. <laughs> is there a particular type of knock? Can you show me what it is? <laughs> um, no. Any will do, but you have to, yeah. So when, when, when it's public, I suppose I'm, I'm interested to know what it is that the, the design has to do or needs to do to, to, to be appealing to you know, us out there, if that makes sense. So what mm -hmm. is it about that design that will work in a marketplace? It's a bit fuzzy. Like, I mean, you, you can never fully predict what's going to sell or what's going to work. Um, people tend to like things that are comfortable and that they're familiar with. It's not necessarily what, you know, you always want to make, but it's a, like the way that I see the type design industry is it's a bit like a lottery. Mm -hmm. Like, and you kind of, you throw a bunch of things out there and some just kind of, it's viral, it becomes a meme, <laughs> it kind of takes off. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that would be obviously the ideal for the public um, typeface that you put out there. Uh, that would be a commercial ideal. <laughs> okay, so what, so a commercial um, idea, but not necessarily a philosophical or a personal ideal then? I think, yeah. Um, and I think maybe, uh, like we were talking about the sale of fonts and how people find them, and it's still a bit of a black box. Uh, there's no great way for people to search things out, to remember things when they need to use them. And so people may go to things that they're comfortable with, familiar, already know because they don't know how to find mm. new stuff. Tell me a bit more about your, your, your studio and, and how then you therefore are able to position yourself in a marketplace. But there are a lot of companies that do make fonts that are out there. Uh, as Definitely. you say, it's a bit of a black box. So yeah. I'm curious to know how you can position yourself uh, in, in differentiation or in competition to those other uh, others in the marketplace. Um, there's a lot out there, but once you kind of, once you see people, everyone has their own voice and everyone has their own style. Um, and you kind of, you learn that and you feel it. Um, we have strong history in serious editorial legibility based work. Um, so we know that our fonts are rigorous. They stand up to the test of different use cases. Um, the, our other specialty and deep history that we have is attention to culture and language and regional things. We do all of our fonts in both Latin and Cyrillic from the start. Uh, and there's a lot of, and there's a lot of, yeah, research that's gone into that and opinions that about how fonts can be sensitive to different readers from different languages and different backgrounds. Mm, yeah. Uh, and on the flip side, say this is something that you're working with, you know, the public, I suppose, mm -hmm. in some ways. And the flip side, as you said, the other part of your business is about imaging and, and branding as well. Yeah. So t tell me about what that part of your business entails. Um, to me, they're intrinsically tied because yeah. uh, it's whenever you're doing a brand, whenever you're doing graphic design for someone, you're always using type. You can't avoid it. You're going to have to you're going to have to write their name or write what they're about. And every typeface has a mood. 
it has history, it has connotations uh, that naturally come with it. And so for me, like so much of branding is just pairing the right ones. Um, so it's knowing what exists, what fits with the message that a company wants to communicate or knowing how to draw it and how to make it how to make scratch. it work. Can, can you give me an example of a, of a company that you've worked with and how you've, how you've communicated through type the ideals that that company wants to espouse, I suppose? Um, absolutely. Uh, one of our current clients is a cafe. Uh, and they had a very, the owner of the cafe has a very specific background history and she had very, she knew what she wanted people to feel when they were in there. Um, she's, it's kind of, it's part Americana, it's part old European cafe. She kind of grew up traveling all over and wanted a space that felt like home and felt like a lot of places and yet not one place specifically. Um, and that was a lot of things that we could we could target very much with type. Um, it's funny because a cafe, I mean, for me, I think, what is it? It's the, it's the furnishings, it's the smell of the coffee, it's the yeah. food, it's that kind it's of all stuff. Of it. It's all of it. But what is it that really helps when it comes to branding a space like a cafe or something else when you look simply at the signage or the menu? What, how does that make us feel like we're in the space that we want to be in? It's the place that we need to be. But even in a cafe, type is everywhere. Like there's the signage when you're seeing it across the street. There's um, how you're seeing the signage when you're walking up right next to it. What makes you cross over the threshold and into this space. There's menus, there's prices, there's how you navigate your way through the space. So we worked a lot on like, and we did a lot of interior consultations. So it's a lot of, yeah, furnishings and interiors and how you manage your way. But you're still, you're constantly seeing type and type is one of the strongest ways to kind of cue different feelings in different locations and different associations and people. Does your type make the coffee taste better? Um, it makes the experience of sitting <laughs> and hanging out there better. <laughs> what's, what's the big vision for um, your company? Because I know, also know Salonka is another element that's to come, is that right? Uh, yeah, so Salonka is a type foundry that's um, the name that we're releasing all of our typefaces through. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, yeah, it's, uh, we've been doing type for like eight, nine years now. Uh, and we're excited to finally have things under our own imprint and our own name out there for people to buy. Mm -hmm. What is your vision for type? Earlier today I was talking and, you know, um, Matteo was saying, mm -hmm. there's too much Helvetica. I'd love to get rid of it, <laughs> you know. I, I mean, yes. and, I, and I hear that all the time. Within 12 months, what is it that you hope for your company? Um, the fonts that the fonts that we're selling, a lot of them are des like a lot of them we designed for ourselves when we wanted to use something and we couldn't find something that fit exactly right. Um, and like we're talking, like there's moods, there's needs, there's certain fittings um, that nothing fits. So we design things that come from a need and from a use case because we're both designers and type. Uh, designers so hopefully if we find them useful we want to extend the offer to other people and perhaps they will as well um, we're doing a lot of stuff that's screen based and for screen first and bringing a lot of text faces for that um, and like I was talking like cultural sensitivities like there's in the Cyrillic market, it's just starting to boom. Um, but there's a lot of Cyrillic fonts that haven't been de designed by people that really understand the culture and the associations and connotations and how things work. Um, and that's so, so making Cyrillic readable for a broader audience, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of uh, people will come to me, or a lot of people that don't understand the type design as a business or the type design as thing, they're like, oh, but there's so many fonts already, isn't there enough? Um, and to me, like fonts, it's like anything else. Each font carries its own voice and its own history and its own thing. And the more, the more that exists, the more voices, the more set, like, the more songs that you can pair with things like it expands the possibilities for designers of what they can say. 
so beautiful. I love this. This is fantastic. <laughs> um, Ksenia, thank you so much. It's wonderful to speak with you. Thank you.